Welcome to the Psych 101 Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Maxwell, and I'm beyond thrilled today to have my guest, Dennis Simsek. Dennis also goes by the name of Anxiety Guy on his podcast and social media channels. He's a CBT and NLP master practitioner and has created lasting change in people suffering from anxiety disorders. His podcast has been downloaded over 1 million times. He's held the number one ranking in health category on iTunes for 12 weeks in 2017. And his mental health blog has been named the top 10 best blogs for 2017 on Healthline and Feedspot. What an introduction. Let's meet this man, Dennis. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Hey, Luke. Good to hear from you, man. Uh, that's that's some serious energy, man. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> and uh, you know what? You're going in the right direction, buddy. I love it. But great to oh, be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I'm really happy to be here, too. So, you uh, you've gone to a, you've got to a big place. You have over a million downloads. Like that's that's a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But take us back. How did you get to this point? What what started it? What's the moment that kind of got you started on this journey? Um, as far as podcasting specifically, um, you know, it was really interesting because there was a time in my life, like everybody else, where they begin to contemplate, um, you know, what direction they their lives are going. There was a long time there where, where I was stuck in a job. Um, I was working for someone that I really enjoy working for. Deep down, you know, ever since I was a kid, I had this entrepreneurial kind of approach to life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, there I was. I was contemplating my life walking in the mall. And this was when I had given up on the anxiety guy for about a year after blogging and all that sort of stuff and, and not doing it right. And... Um, and there I was in the mall, and this lady comes in behind me and says, "Excuse me, are you the anxiety guy?" And funny enough, all that Whoa. entire <laughs> that entire day, um, that entire day, I was going back and forth with about ten ideas. You know, I wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, uh, you know, help them with anxiety, but as well, you know, business side of things and and sporty sides of this. So I had many different directions I could have gone. So this lady said, "Are you the anxiety guy?" I said. Well, yeah, I'm the anxiety guy. And this was completely out of the blue. And so she goes, well, you know, you helped me so much through uh, your resources and your program and such. And I just I was just floored. And I said, my God, like, are you telling me the truth? She said, oh, my God, you made a huge difference in my life. So I saw that as a sign for me to continue to do what I was passionate about. And that was to help people with GAD, health, anxiety and panic. And to stay in that lane, because a lot of people were filling people with all sorts of garbage. Um, there was all sorts of information out there that was based around coping and 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 managing the problem. And therefore, I had a completely different approach. So I said, you know what, how am I going to reach the most people in the shortest amount of time? And since podcasting is so new still, you know, we're just getting into it. we're just mm -hmm. scratching yep. the surface. Yep. And since we can reach a lot of people, I said, you know what, somehow, you know, to be honest with you. I really don't know exactly how podcasting came about, but I had the idea and people said, you, you're a radio kind of guy. You got a nice voice. I said, let's try it. And, yep. you know, <laughs> just like you, you're doing fantastic stuff. So it just took off from there. But it all started with a story like that. And I saw it as a sign from the universe and God that said, you know, this is what you need to do. And how are we going to reach the most people? Let's go into podcasting because it's so new. Wow. And then so that I find that amazing. I, I mean, being recognized in public is not a like commonplace. It's not a thing that happens unless you actually make an impact, unless you actually do mm -hmm. something. So that just shows me that you were making an impact even back then before you really started this journey. What started you to get into mental health specifically? Like what was your motivation behind that? You know, my motivation behind it was People were given such little options as far as what they could do with their mental health challenges and their anxiety and panic, specifically even depression. The amount of options that people have are very limited. Um, we're, you know, we have, and I'm not shutting down the first line of treatments at all, but my biggest thing was how can I begin to help people see things clearly, a bit clearer, and begin to take care of some of the the anchors that are holding them back because you'll notice that a lot of people with health anxiety, they will shoot for 
achieving certain things, but they'll never really take care of the underlying unconscious factors that are, in fact, the main contributors to their anxiety or their mental health challenges. They're always trying to meditate or do the yoga or, you know, gain to be positive or all that sort of stuff. And so what got me into it was I said, you know, people need someone out there that they can relate to, first of all, because I've been through it and I overcame it. Relating is, is a huge part of the whole situation. And then yep. it comes down to, well, you know, if someone else can do something, so can I. But, you know, I wanted to give people options. I wanted to show them that there is multiple different ways they can go about these challenges and they don't have to stick to the status quo. They don't have to go in line with everybody else. In fact, if you look at the mental health numbers these days, it's rising uncontrollably. It's an epidemic right now. And um, and mm -hmm. people, I believe deep down that people are being brainwashed in a lot of ways and they're being manipulated so that the system can, you know, can continue in a lot of ways. So, you know, in a, in a big way, I'm against the system, but I am for the system as well. There's a time and place for everything. But I started this because I said, here's what I went through and here's what I know. And, you know, what, let's use this to help more people. But it, it's, it all started with inspiring people and trying to give them more options, really. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seeing a need. And the best, I mean, I always see like the best, whether it's a business, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's a project or just something someone's passionate about, mm -hmm. the best ones always come about because of a need. Mm -hmm. There's a need out there. You see it and you decide you have to be the one to step up and do it. Absolutely. And um, there's so many needs out there. Mm. There's so many needs. There's so many different people. And that's why every one of you listening right now, mm. there's a need that you can fill in the world, big mm. or small. There's a need that you can fill and you can create a huge positive action mm -hmm. because of it. Mm -hmm. So you got into this, you're doing this and it's going well, but I, I find it curious to see that you didn't go into counseling per se, mainly mm. because I, I'm not taking that route either. I prefer to go mm. along with what I'm doing, with speaking, mm. with more mm. of a coaching style, which I see you're doing as mm -hmm. well. And mm -hmm. I find it very interesting. So what, what, was, what made you decide to not go into counseling, but to go into CBT and NLP and explain to us what CBT and NLP are? You know, it's, it's super funny that you say that. I was actually thinking about that a couple of days ago and someone asked me the exact same question. So... You know, I was at a crossroads at around 31, 32 years old. I had overcome this, um, this debilitating cycle, this struggle. I mean, it was brutal. I was minutes away from taking my life. And then I said, you know what? I cannot do this. So my son, who was just born, you know, was going to live without a dad. So I didn't want that kind of weight on his shoulder. So that was the big reason why I didn't uh, follow through with that mm -hmm. idea. But more than anything, you know, counseling, when I see counseling, I see managing. When I see counseling, I see coping. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be ways where we can help people at a quicker speed. When we look at counseling, when we look at therapy, although I'm not bashing therapy, I mean, it works for a ton of people, but it also doesn't work for a lot of people. But for me, yeah. seeing the statistics that said seven years of counseling on average gets you, and this is generous gets you 25% success. Okay. So you got to talk about your stuff and you're talking wow. for seven years and you're going to get 25% out of it. And when I looked at those statistics, I said, no, 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 this isn't for me. So what's the stuff that people don't know about? What, you know, there's got to be some secrets here. There's got to be some stuff to be able to, you know, recondition people at a quicker speed at a deeper level. So that's where NLP and CBT came. I did a lot of research on this. I looked at a lot of studies. I looked at a lot of uh, percentages. And the success was almost, you know, I work with a lot of people today where they struggle for years and years and years. And within a couple of days, they can go from seeing, changing the perception based around the thing mm -hmm. that's causing them the most problems. And they can begin to mold the way they see that. And to me, that was really interesting hmm. to take something and to say, you know what, this manifested based on a memory the first time. Someone who suffers from anxiety a lot of times, you know, they have the first panic attack. What if I go back in time, which NLP teaches, goes back in time and reframe the whole experience? What's a panic attack? Well, at the moment, I'm seeing it as a life-threatening thing and I'm scared it's going to happen again or... I can see that panic attack is a sign that my body and my system is in perfect working order. 
I could see that as a misinterpretation made by my mind that caused me to feel that way. All of a sudden, when I attach different meanings to what happened, I can move forward with my life with less fear of it happening again. He does is it uh, works on changing your thought patterns, restructuring your thought patterns, as well as your behaviors. Okay, so thoughts, behaviors, it shows you why you're doing the things that you're doing uh, for what reasons. And NLP touches more on the unconscious mind, where it goes into your memory bank and, and your storage system and begins to take care of things at a deeper level. Um, but they're both okay. beautiful problem solving methods. People can use to eliminate anxiety, not cope, but eliminate it out of their lives and to begin to change the perception over the things that are causing them trouble right now. Very interesting. I mm. wow. I have I have actually not heard. I mean, I know I've heard of CBT. I've heard of NLB, uh, but I haven't done that much research into them. And now I'm definitely going to because mm. I feel that like I'm doing some of this stuff subconsciously mm -hmm. just from what I've learned from interacting with people. And I'm really curious to see this. And also, I love that you were self-taught. A lot of people ask me, well, do you have a psychology degree? Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do you, God is going like, no, I mm -hmm. researched everything I could find and mm -hmm. then I lived it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I lived it and then I learned from people There's who the have power. lived it. People, There's the power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather yeah. do that and get real life experience yeah. than go to school and not be able to actually help somebody, which I'm not saying that you can't <laughs> if you go to school. Yeah. Um, but I know me in school, do not mix and I prefer to learn on the job, you know, in just have my hands in the dirt mm -hmm. um, doing it. You know, what's interesting wow. is that I believe, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I believe mm -hmm. in five to 10 years, you're going to find a huge shift in the way people approach trying to get rid of their, their problems and their challenges. They're going to go mm -hmm. from people that have not experienced the stuff that they experienced and the people that are more book fed. We're talking about the counseling area, which is totally fine, works for a lot of people, right. but you're going to yeah. find them going from that to going towards more life coaching and going towards a life coach that's been in their shoes, that can relate to it, right? That can really take care of things and, and be able to create rapport with someone at a deeper level. And that's something that people have difficulty with, with counsel. That is interesting. I haven't thought about the way it'll go. What are your, and a quick, I want to get mm. your thoughts on this because obviously like I, it works. Like I am able to help people. You're able to help people because we have that experience. We've mm. learned on our own. We've learned from mistakes, trial and error and from our successes. Um, what are your thoughts on that becoming the norm? Do you think that will cause a, a good in the world because you have more people, more life experience, but less actual training because that's the only thing that when I think about it is that's why I make sure when people tell me that they want to help people when people tell me you know they mm -hmm. want to go in the mental field or that they are helping mm -hmm. their friends I say okay you have life experience good but mm. do, you, do you have a foundation also to back that up to make sure you're not giving bad advice to make sure that um, you're not causing harm of course we can't mm -hmm. we can't control for every situation but it's like counselors, they spend a lot of years in school to learn everything they can mm -hmm. in order not to make you know mistakes and learn the best practices and ways of doing things. Totally. What are your? I mean, I I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends around the counseling area. I've got a lot of friends around the NLP world and the CBT world mm -hmm. and the hypnosis world, mm -hmm. and we always discuss these sorts of things. And we're always trying to help each other um, be better at what we do to help more people. But you know, with um, when we're talking about the the counseling realm versus the NLP realm versus the hypnosis realm, you know, what we're really talking about is a world right now where people want a solution to their problem and they don't really care how they get it. OK, they just, you know, I'm suffering. Just help me get through this. The problem with the unconscious mind is that it doesn't understand words, mm -hmm. okay? That's a problem yeah. because in order for you to create a change, the unconscious mind understands feelings, okay? So when you begin to get truly emotional and you get completely dissatisfied in your condition and you've got a vision for your life and that sort of stuff which creates this emotion within you, all of a sudden your nervous system goes, okay, well, I guess he wants to change and let's look further into this. Let's find the answers. So it understands emotions and it understands images. NLP and hypnosis mm -hmm. works a lot with images, right? Where you, you close your eyes, you go into that mental state and, 
and you get to create that visualization of what you want and reframing your past experiences. And it also, you know, when we're talking about the way that um, the best way for someone to create this change, to me, mm -hmm. the best way to create it is to basically, like I mentioned earlier, is to go back in time but not talk about it happened so much but to more so reframe it or edit the movie on what happened okay to notice things you didn't notice from the past to take a lesson from what happened rather than to you know to place blame on someone or something or you for what happened because people live with that stuff for the rest of their lives but if i can go back and i can just think about the experience for example and to say you know what i really didn't see things from that person's point of view or i really didn't notice things such as the scent in that room or i really didn't you know recognize how i was overreacting or whatever it was when i go back and i edit the movie of what happened you can begin to alter your memories and every time your unconscious mind goes back in time and says okay what happened the first time we were stuck in the same environment or the situation what it's going to find is something different a pleasant experience it was a learning experience interesting and therefore the anxiety begins to lessen wow i'm just i'm just i'm trying mm. i'm absorbing this right now and i'm just like mm. i'm because i think like i wonder because i'm a very you know visual person and like i just mm. i'm imagining how how different my therapy would be because i had a i had a great therapist we got along great he really helped me through lots of my stuff and i was seeing mm -hmm. him for about six months um, and then I, I, he, I could, he couldn't help me anymore but just because of the, how much I had improved. And I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. wow, this could actually be really powerful. Like even now in my life, cause I mean, everyone has problems. <laughs> we all go through mm -hmm. bad times. We all have stuff. And I'm just thinking, wow, I could really apply this to my life just to help me, you know, whenever through anything. Totally. This is absolutely, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm going to research, I'm, I'm going to research this more. I am going to look at this <laughs> more. Um, we could Good go stuff. on forever talking about this cause I'm, mm -hmm. I, right now I'm fascinated. Um, but I know many of mm -hmm. my listeners don't share my, you know, really intent love for, um, psychology. So I want to conclude this with what is one thing, one thing that our listeners can do right now to improve their mental health. You know, honestly, I would say find a, an answer that is based around a couple of components because hypnosis creates the energetic component, the energetic field where you're talking and you're, you're imagining things, you're visualizing things. That's the energetic field. Mm -hmm. Counseling therapy is based around the mental field. So cognitive restructuring, behavioral. And then there's other methods that encompass physiology and such. What I would say to, to people that um, want to better their mental health is to start with the most important way that we create communication with other people and the universe itself, and that is through your physiology. I would say start with not your thought patterns, but start with being able to place yourself in an emotional state through your physiology that you want. For example, if I push my shoulders back and my chin back for a minimum of two minutes, it's been proven that I relax 20 to 40 percent more if I just hold that pose. OK, imagine going about your day just trying to fix your physiology every time you slump. If I'm in a certain physiology, my body looks a certain way. Even if I get a negative thought, I'm going to be able to handle that negative thought a lot differently because this physiology reminds me of success. It reminds me of a time where I was very successful and proud of myself. Whereas if you see people on the computer all the time, they're always hunched over. Mm -hmm. When they get a negative thought, then they begin to label it. They begin to internalize that. All right. So I would say start with fixing your body throughout the day. Every time you slump, pick yourself up. Second thing is begin to ask yourself the question of what's fun about this? What's fun about this takes you away from catastrophic thinking, Okay, thinking about the future, and it brings you back present moment right now what's fun about this me and luke you know we're kicking it off we're in this mm -hmm. in this position and we're helping a lot of people what's fun about this is that i can contribute to people more than myself and which gives me a sense of fulfillment fantastic this is fun i you know what else is fun is that i made a new friend this is fun right now if i begin mm -hmm. to turn my focus on to what's fun about this right now and fix my physiology what's going to happen is i can stay 
within the period of the next 10 minutes. You need to live your life 10 minutes at a time rather than thinking what's going to happen later on the day, catastrophic thinking in the week, going back in time. I used to be so good in the past, all that stuff. You got to live your life 10 minutes at a time. Fix your physiology and ask yourself the question of what's fun about this. Create something out of nothing. Because when you can do that, you can alter the types of thoughts that you have. You can modify things. You can modify your environment. You can modify your thoughts. You can modify a person. You can modify your person, your memories. So those are a couple of things that I would suggest the ball rolling in the right direction, buddy. That is that is mm. that is absolutely great. Lots of great stuff. And, and I, I love that you mentioned physiology because I had a previous guest who was talking about confidence and we were and he had me going mm. through exercises that he does with people that he coaches mm. to show mm -hmm. just how much like demonstrating how it affects you. And it's and it is incredible to me when the first time he did that to me was that wow, I'm seeing proof mm. that my posture mm affects everything about me everything everything, everything. And but we don't we, we don't we don't learn about exactly it. we don't learn about especially it we're sitting in especially you know lots of you know teenagers follow me sitting in desks all day at school and just mm -hmm. it's it's pretty bad I've, i'm reading a lot about that not to get into a rabbit hole here but there's been mm -hmm. efforts into changing that because people have realized it's not good for these kids growing up in desks Thank you Absolutely. so much, Dennis. You have imparted a lot of wisdom. Um, I've, <laughs> I've been blown away. I'm going to re-listen to this over and again to you know find every single nugget that I can and use it to help others. I want to close with this quote on your Instagram. I loved it. And <laughs> it was very simple. <laughs> I said, nothing valuable comes fast. A lesson to all of us <laughs> that it just takes time. Sometimes things don't happen as fast as we want it to, and that's okay. It can take time. We can progress at a slower rate than we want to because we're mm. making progress. Um, so true. Dennis, wonderful talking to you. How can people find out more about you, listen to your podcast? Where can they find you? You can go to anxietyexit.com, mm -hmm. um, and I do have a program, but they can pick up that program if they'd like. As well, the Anxiety Guy podcast is on the – on iTunes and you can go there and just in the health section and, and you'll find it there. It's usually in the top 10. So um, other than that, you know what? Go to anxietyexit.com. Shoot me a question if you guys have any questions. But it's been a total pleasure to, to be a part of this podcast, man. And you're, you're going in the right direction. I love how you're inspiring people and, and helping people. So yeah. more the better. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. Great talking to you. All the links and everything yeah. will be in the show notes at psych101podcast.com. You can find everything about Dennis there, his website, um, bio, everything about him. Shoot him a question. If you have questions, he obviously has a lot of wisdom. So thank you, Dennis. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And you've been listening to the Psych 101 Podcast with me, your host, Luke Maxwell, and my guest, Dennis, at, a.k.a. The Anxiety Guy. Been a pleasure, and as always, be unashamed and stay unashamed. Thank you, Luke.